Hi there, welcome back to ADSR Machine Tutorials. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, get yourself subscribed, youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. Today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at setting up some parallel processing in Machine 2.0 software. Now with the inclusion of a proper mixer in version 2 of the machine software, it's much better set up for us to do some parallel processing or applying some parallel processing techniques. So last week, I'll show you how to make this drum beat it's completely been made with sounds from the drum synths, drum sounds from the drum synths in machine software. And from that tutorial, I actually made one or two tweaks to this beat. So this kick drum here, I added this distortion just to beef it up. Just brings a lot more vibe to that kick drum. And also we've got this beta kick here. So just solo that which is providing a bit of transient in for the kick drum um, and with some parallel processing or New York style compression on this drum beat I want to bring out those transients but there just wasn't enough punch on the kick to bring it out even further so I did this transient master and just boosted the attack a little bit so you know it's just bringing out the transient in the kick drum and obviously mute it you can see there's just no punch to the kick so a couple of tweaks I made from last week's tutorial video in order to set up some parallel processing what we need to do is start looking at these aux ends here on the mixer channel and they're not actually by default they're not visible so by default your mixer will probably look like this but I tend to just highlight all of these buttons so I've got my plugins I can see them in here um, my in and outs inputs and outputs and my aux sends um, and once your plugins are showing you can start rearranging the order of these and stuff which is pretty cool so what we want to look at is we've got this drum group here so we want to look at the group send over here in this auxiliary channel and one thing I noticed was we need to actually set up at the moment we can only go to we can send a level to the master or externally so we're not actually getting an option to send to another group so we need to create another group and I noticed even then go back to group A we don't get the option to send it to group B so what we need to do before we do anything else is actually put an effect on group B so I'm going to start off showing you how to do some parallel processing with the solid bus compressor which comes with machine 2.0 software so now I've added that onto group B and now I get the option to create an aux auxiliary send from the drum group to so send a level to group B so you can highlight that in there and what I can do now actually is double click on the master channel and then I just have my group mix up here which is quite nice so obviously if I wanted to double click back in there I can just break that out and I can start tweaking my group levels my drum group levels but then this is quite a nice way of consolidating and when you want to start mixing groups and stuff so we set, set up this auxiliary send here so we're getting a signal into group B and one good way of kind of like setting up parallel processing so you can hear what you're doing and stuff is at the moment this auxiliary send is set, set to pre so it's pre fader so the, the level from this group is getting sent to group B so I can turn down group A and then I'm kind of I'm dealing with that parallel processing that I'm going to apply to this channel I'm dealing with that independently it's soloed now of course if I put it to post this auxiliary send is getting sent to group B post fader and of course we've brought the level down in this fader so we're not going to get any level coming in to group B unless you brought that level back up so on that I'm pre so now I'm dealing with this auxiliary send channel independently and we're going to apply some process into this channel here so for New York style compression or parallel compression what I want to do is just make it really sort of click, bring out the transients in this this beat so on its own it's not going to sound particularly great because it's going to be taking all the tail off and having a really fast release on this compressor but it's going to bring out the transients in the drums and then we're going to mix that back in with the original drum track and it's going to make it a little bit more punchy so 
we want something quite clicky so I'm going to go quite extreme with these settings slow attack so all the transients are coming through fast release we can keep that as it is let's push this ratio right up to 10 and let's bring this threshold down and you can see the amount of compression that's being applied in here and we're getting quite a clicky sort of sound now really clicky turn it off and it's taken all the decay and all the tail off the sound it's just completely got rid of that but it's made it very clicky so it's bringing out those transients and then what we can do is mix in or mix back in group A got our levels here for our process channel and our dry unprocessed drum group here and we can just mute that and you can hear the effect it's having so it's definitely bringing out some transients there on that drum group mix this to taste and of course you could actually set up your parallel compression set up your compressor here and then have the drum group dry and then you can mix in this way so you've got a level that you're happy with and so you've got the solid bus compressor you've also got in here the just the standard compressor that comes with machine and I thought this is quite interesting to look at for some parallel processing because you've got this classic setting but I think this is a feature on the new machine 2 software is that you've got feedback setting in, in this compressor which is just quite aggressive and quite rough so I thought this is quite a good one to try some parallel processing with so bring down the level of group A Bring this threshold right down. And let's back the attack off. Keep that click going. Sharpen up the release. And take the amount down a bit. We're getting quite a lot of gain reduction. It has a very different sound. If you switch it to classic, it has a very different sound. So. No, it's a bit more experimental, but let's give it a go. Let's blend in the, the original drum track here. So it's definitely adding something to those drums. It depends on the kind of sound you're after, but it's making the, the hi-hats and the top end a lot more kind of in your face and aggressive and helping with the transients at the same time. Okay, so a couple of different parallel processing techniques there using different compressors and of course this feedback option to create a bit more of a distorted parallel processing technique. So another thing we can look at here is that we can actually apply all sorts of different parallel processing. It doesn't necessarily need to be on drums and it doesn't necessarily need to be compressors that we're using for this parallel processing technique. So Let's mute both of these channels, set up a new group and load up a bass on this group and go for this brot bass that I loaded in before and the reason being it's got quite a clean sound, it's not really distorted at the moment and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some parallel distortion to this bass sound so let's just program in some basic notes And let's set up a group send like we did before. So, like we were saying before, at the moment we can't really send it to a new group. We need to create this group first. And move back to our master channel. We need to create this group, and then we need to apply an effect to this group and a distortion in there. And now go back to group C, and we can send now doing auto send to group D, and 
let's make sure it's pre fader so then we can do the we can solo the parallel channel and process it without hearing the kind of original and then we can blend it in afterwards so so we've put a distortion on there and the kind of advantages of say doing some parallel distortion in this way is that we can actually treat this channel completely independently so what we could do is go I don't want to distort the low end of that bass channel I just want to distort the mids and the highs so what I can do is add an EQ beforehand and we can reorder this up here and add this EQ here kind of put an, a high pass on this parallel channel a little high pass and then the distortion tweak around with the distortion if I take the EQ off it's going to give a very different sound so you know because when before that EQ was muted we're sending a lot of low frequency into that distortion and so it's responding to the low frequency a lot more so we eq in it and we're just distorting the mids and the tops and then we can blend in our original bass blend these to taste realize that actually inserted earlier I'd inserted a distortion onto that group C so get rid of that distortion and now we can blend in this distorted parallel channel to taste obviously without the EQ it's a lot more aggressive mute and unmute it's just a very subtle, nice, fizzy kind of top end that we've added to that bass sound. Quite nice. So yeah, there's a bit of parallel processing techniques in Machine, showing you how to set it up using the mixer and the auxiliary sends. So hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Hope you find it useful. Any questions, please get in touch. And make sure also you get yourself over to our website, machineskills.com. Tons more tutorials showing you various different production and processing techniques using Machine 2.0 software. And thanks for watching. All right, cheers. Bye.